guys, I'm back with another swipe. Still trying to work out colours for my big pull that I'm going to do tomorrow. Hopefully I will do it tomorrow. So, back with the blues and the silver this time. Um, we have navy blue in the global paints. Global Fine Art in Pasto. We have that that's mixed three parts Floetrol to one part paint. Silver. Silver needs to be mixed thicker. Um, that's two parts Floetrol and one part paint. My white is my swipe colour. I've mixed it three to one and then I've just added a dash more Floetrol. I just want it slightly thinner than the colours. Uh, turquoise with a bit of white to lighten the turquoise. Three to one. Cool blue. This paint thickens up really quickly, the cool blue. You have to watch it. I'll put a little bit more Floetrol in it. Uh, three to one but then an extra dash of Floetrol because it does thicken very quickly. And the last colour is cobalt blue, three to one. Now in the pour that I did this morning, this one, earlier today, this one, I'm not very happy with the shape of the cells. They're all wiggly and wobbly, haven't really stayed in their correct shape. That was one drop of silicone per cup or hair oil I used on that. I'm going to try treadmill silicone with this swipe and just see what the difference is, if any, if we get a difference in the cell shape. So I'm going back to two drops of oil in 60 mils, 60 grams of paint. So that's 45 grams of Floetrol, 15 grams of paint, which is three to one, so one drop of oil per 30 grams or per one ounce, whether it be hair oil, um, treadmill, that's the spot on treadmill lubricant that I use. So two drops in each. This is a lot thinner than the hair serum. Two drops in each color except in the white. It's easier to drip in this silicone oil. The hair serum, you put a drop in and it kind of drips afterwards so you end up putting more than you should. I'm just going to put... Oh, I won't. Okay, so with this one I poured horizontal lines, navy, blue, aqua and then swiped across. With this other one, I'm going to pour vertical lines this way and then swipe with the colours. Now, with the silicone oil, just two little stirs. It's all you want. One, two. You want to break the silicone up. One, two. If you break it up, you're going to get tiny little cells. We don't want that. Okay. Start with the blue. Leave a bit of space at the top for the white paint. This card that I'm working on is um, A3 size, 30 by 40 centimetres, uh, 12 by 16 inches, I think it is. Just a cardboard sheet that I buy. It's a good weight, much cheaper than practicing on canvases. And I write on the back what I did, ratios that I did, so I can always look back on them something worked or if something didn't work, I've got a record of what I did. Try and overlap the colours a little bit. 
because when your cells pop up it's best to have different colours on top of each other. You'll get better cells than swapping over just plain blue. Now white on plain blue is not going to do that much. White on a mixture of light blue and dark blue is going to look much better. Go with our aqua. A light colour with a dark colour is always going to look better. I've got enough paint. I don't really want to have to mix up another lot very quickly. And the navy. Navy, I'm just going to put little thin bits in because I really like the way the navy works with the other colours. And you do get really pretty cells from the navy. Against the white, you get that really good contrast. Just very quickly make up, no, it should be right, once I've tilted it should be fine. Now the silver, as I said before in previous videos, the silver is, it kind of reacts differently to the other paints. It makes the, the cells stretch bigger. So if you've got metallics in your pore and wondering why your cells are huge and not maybe the shape that you want, it's because of the metallics in it, it makes it stretch. So I'm just going to tilt this to cover the card, make sure everything's covered. Go this way and cover this edge here. Plenty of paint by the looks of it. Make a little room for the white. in that little gap there. We want everything to be covered. Pour on the white. A little bit down the side as well. Sides always get missed when you swipe. And what I'm using for the swiper is again my sheet of plastic. It was a document holder, I just cut up. It's a nice weight. I know people use damp paper towels and things like that. I find this works best for me. Just going to lay that on the white. Make sure it's touching. I'm not going to put any pressure on it. I'm just going to drag. Slowly, make sure we cover the whole sheet. And then a little bit of a lift up at the end. And just wipe your swiper on the end. I use a piddle pad, puppy piddle pad. Nice and absorbent, catches all my mess easy to clean up when I'm done. Okay. Let's see if we can fix up this side bit there, just a touch. Interesting to see the difference that the silicon makes as opposed to the hair serum. want to torch straight away. I want to just wait and see what happens. As I said in the previous video earlier today, when you heat the paint with your torch, paint gets hot, it melts, it spreads, cells spread, you end up with odd shaped cells, elongated shells, cells. 
I just want, hopefully, my cells to stay relatively round. These ones, they're not really round. They've um, gone all over the place. Not very happy with them. These cells are looking good so far. So far, so good. And we're getting colours inside colours, which is what you want from where your colours have overlapped each other. You're getting three colours there, the navy, the aqua and then the blue in the centre. These ones over here, really pretty, got different colours in those. Where you get the lighter colour here, the aqua, you're not going to get as much cell action there as you can see. White over a light colour doesn't really give you very much. Again over here, white over the aqua doesn't do a lot. White over the dark colours, over the blue, you're really going to see those cells pop up. It's the difference in the densities. The dark colours are generally denser in, in, in pigment and they're going to sink to the bottom, push the other colours out of the way. The lighter colours rise up to the surface with the oil, creating your cells. Now I'm going to torch this top bit here where the white paint is thicker. It's not as easy for the cells to come up through this thicker white paint on their own. When, they, when you get down here, there's not as much white paint because it's kind of been dragged down. So these cells can come up relatively easily on their own because there's not that much white paint there. Over here, it's a bit harder. I'll just give them a bit of a helping hand. Burn your paint. That'll do. You can see the little ones popping up here, up the top. So I'm liking the cell shape at the moment, but we'll have to wait and see what happens over the next hour it will change cells will keep growing they'll keep popping up on their own hopefully it will be nice so I have to decide whether I want to pour vertically like this with my colors again or pour horizontally with my colors what do you think let me know in the comments the one I did yesterday, instead of having silver, I had gold. The gold and the blue tend to make a bit of green. Not quite sure if I like that or not, that effect. But you can have a look at my other video, see what you think. Let me know if you like the gold or the silver better. big cells, got some little cells. The white swipe is causing lacing. So I've got a bit of everything really. The silver here, nice big cells from the silver. 
a lot of these colours have got silver in them. So the ones that have got the silver in them generally have grown a bit bigger. Alright, let's wait and see what that does. I'm not going to torch it anymore. I'll just leave it back away. We don't know when to stop fiddling, us pourers. I'll put a photo up anyway on, um, on the Facebook page. It's the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group on Facebook. Look it up. Join us. We'd love to have you. Bye till next time.